Hey guys, welcome and welcome back. Today we're going to look at a question submitted by Laura into the request box, which is all about how to amend masks in Photoshop after you've already applied them and continued onwards with your retouching. So this is a really frequent question for those who maybe don't know their way around Photoshop to the nth degree and or maybe are new to Photoshop. If the contents of this video is terrifying for you, please do look at our online course, Photoshop for Beginners. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. It'll give you a notification every single time we upload a YouTube video, which is every single week on a Friday. I don't want to talk around this for too long. So let's get five minutes on the clock and get stuck in. We're looking at a picture today of Finn. This was shot up in the Highlands for one of our online courses called Shit Hot Shots. And essentially I've already done the edit, but I'm adding bits to it basically to illustrate this point. So let me walk through just the layers that we've got in play. I've got groups here for my original retouching. This is all done and complete. So we're gonna forget about those. This essentially is acting as our background layer, just like it would be if you opened a new image into Photoshop. And then this is a gradient layer that's adding a pop of light up to the top of the image with a rough subject mask on it. Now, if you're in this situation and you're thinking, you know, where are these lines coming from in my shot? How do I amend masks that I've already done? Well, we're going to run through that now. So in terms of this image, if I were going to be critiquing this, or judging it for an award situation, then I would be drawn to these straight lines running around the subject. That is a mask error. That's a masking problem that you've got. So I would say to the photographer in question, go back and revisit your masks. Now, if I told somebody to do that and they went and moved this layer into select and mask, they're probably not going to have a great deal of success. So how can you amend a mask that already exists within an image but is not on the image layer itself? I realize that's a lot of information. Like I said, if it goes whoo, straight over your head, then please do go ahead and visit that online course that we've got, which takes you through the basics so that you can follow tutorials like this without being bamboozled. Okay? so. If we're in this situation, we can always, always, always go back to the mask and hand mask it out. So we can go ahead and grab a brush. We don't want a huge brush, but we can add a brush and then decide whether we want to use a black brush or a white brush to change how that mask looks. So if we're at 100%, we can add to that mask or we can take stuff away from that mask, right? So we can do those changes here. Now, to make this really, really obvious, I'm just gonna switch it to normal so that you can see everything that I'm doing with this layer. So we can hand mask and change the lines that are happening within it. Okay. Easiest way to go and touch up a mask is to go and do that. Now let me get back to the start here, switch that to normal so that we can see and you can see that I can soften that with a soft brush. If I used a hard brush, I can create a hard edge and clean up around the in focus parts. So that's method number one and is usually the easiest and quickest way to go back and touch up a mask. But what if you need to revisit your subject mask? Well, for me personally in Photoshop, I have found that the most accurate and best way of doing this is to drag the mask in question, the one that's being a bit of a problem, back down onto a image layer. OK, so I'm going to basically pause my retouching, grab that mask, drop it down onto an image layer turn off the effect that was causing the problem in the first place. And then I want to go and amend this mask. Now, I've inverted this mask from its original selection and it's totally up to you whether you feel it's better to invert it or not. I find it easier to get a clean subject mask when my subject is the white part and everything else is black. So when you're looking at your masks at the moment, the subject is the black part and everything else is white. I'm going to invert that so that it's the other way around. And then I need to get back into select a mask. So I can either double click on the mask itself, which is how I have my Photoshop set up, or you can go into properties and choose select a mask. If we're in select a mask here, you can see that mask edge is really bad. I'm going to make sure that my mask edge is set to zero on the shift edge. So let me just sort that out. And that means that nothing's going to be shifted either which way. If you've never done hair masking in Photoshop, we do have a video about that on the YouTube channel. So I'll go ahead and link to that above. But for now, I'm just going to use this. So I'm going to grab my refine edge tool here and I'm not sampling all of the layers. I'm literally just going to sample this particular one. Um, and what I'm hoping to achieve essentially is a good mask 
around the subject. I'm currently using Object Aware. That YouTube video I just mentioned will help you through that. And sometimes it doesn't make the best choices in its life, right? Like this. So we can go and touch that up afterwards, which is probably what I will do. Um, but I'm just gonna get a really quick little bit of this sorted. Uh, and I'm outputting that to a layer mask. So I've got that now. I'm gonna move it back up onto my effect layer, turn it on and invert so that we can see what's happening. And do you remember that really bad bit of the mask? If I left this like this, we would be in the same problem again. So I'm gonna grab a brush and I'm gonna hand mask the difference by changing the hardness of my brush. I just use my keyboard shortcuts to change my brush size and hardness, which is much more efficient. I'll link a video to keyboard shortcuts above. And I'm just gonna use my brush with my general mask theory to go ahead and amend this mask, make sure that it's nice and clean I'm staying pretty far away from the edges, um, but what I want to get is a nice clean edge coming down here. So making sure that I amend the hardness of the brush and the size of the brush to suit the actual situation that's happening here. And you want to go around and just essentially check everything and clean up your masks as you go along. So you just want to go make sure that's nice and clean and then revert, I can switch it back to the blend mode I had it on originally. Um, this layer here is just what we call a movable color. There is a video on that as well, so I'll go and link to it above. But that now gives us a nice clean mask around the subject's head. There is no hard edges, everything is clean, and that is personally how I would go back in and clean up my masks. Hopefully that was useful for you. I realize there was a fair bit of information there, but if it was, please do drop a comment into the comments below, hit the like button if it was helpful, and I'll see you next week for another 5-Minute Friday.